And in this case, we can leave it as stereo, which is fine. No, I don't want to enable diction. What is that? Uh, and we can leave, no, don't find enhanced. What are you doing? Hey, Brian Miller here. And thanks so much for tuning in to Audio for Content Creators, where we help you sound better and level up for all your content creation needs. I feel like I'm being very extra with my hands today. Uh, this is a tutorial on how to use Audio Hijack, a software for Mac users. Sorry, Windows. This, uh, if you're on Windows, this just this one's not for you, unfortunately. Uh, it's a it's a fantastic audio software uh, that's relatively inexpensive from Amoeba, I think, is the company. I have no affiliation with them apart from the fact that I purchased Audio Hijack. Well, I guess that's not true. I purchased Audio Hijack, and then there's another piece of software from them called Loopback, which I'll also show in this video that I did reach out and say, hey, I'm going to do a tutorial on Audio Hijack. Do you mind sending me a copy of Loopback so I can include that in the tutorial? So Loopback they gave me for free, but otherwise I have no affiliation. I have no affiliate links. They don't have a referral program, nothing like that. Audio Hijack is a program that is for capturing any audio anywhere on your computer and basically routing it and recording it however however you need to. Uh, recording it and processing it is mostly what Audio Hijack is for, whereas loopback is really for routing. We'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, the main reason that I wanted to do this tutorial is there's so many folks who are doing so much more live streaming. They're doing Zoom calls and remote podcasts and remote collaborations, and they just want to be able to do audio processing like in real time on the way into the recording instead of having to do it in post and especially for live streaming when you can't do anything in post right it has to be done live uh, you can get complicated expensive pieces of hardware to do that and I have some hardware uh, but this entire tutorial is going to be recorded using this, which is the Movo VSM7. At the time of me filming this tutorial, this microphone is not available yet. Expect a review of this microphone, the production model that they're gonna, the, the official one that's being released in a week or two. So any processing you hear, I will put on the screen down here. So let's take a look at Audio Hijack. I have a bunch of sessions already designed, but let me do a new session. And you'll see what shows up is a template chooser, which is super, super useful. All these different types of things you might want to do are included as templates. But I want to start with a blank session. So we've got a blank session here. Now let's say that I wanted to use Audio Hijack for just recording audio. I wanted to record and process audio in real time, not talking about live streaming yet. First thing I would do is go up here and choose input device and I'm just going to drag it onto the screen. Choose what my input device is. In this case it's my audio box. I'm actually going to choose uh, input 2 as both my left and my right channel which means I'm now capturing this microphone as a dual mono on both sides. Uh, now for what it's worth I'm not capturing anything through Audio Hijack yet. All the audio you're hearing right now is being recorded directly into OBS, which is how I'm doing the screen share. I'll tell you when I'm actually using audio from, from Audio Hijack. The next thing I'm always going to do is go down here to meters and choose a peak RMS meter and drag that in. And for right now, let's just add one more thing, which is a recorder. So right here, we've got recorder. I will drag that in, and then I can choose what I want my recording to be. So I can go down here to Custom, choose Wave, make sure it's set to 24-bit, make sure the sample rate is set to 48 kilohertz. You always want 48 kilohertz for any audio that's synced with video. If you're just doing audio only, you want 44.1 or 4100. And in this case, we can leave it as stereo, which is fine. No, I don't want to enable diction. You can leave this as stereo because we've already set our audio to a dual mono. Otherwise, you could just change this to mono. Okay, now down here, you'll see the big red record button. And as soon as you hit that, you'll notice that now our meter is pegging and it's showing you where the audio chain is actually recording. Uh, and now if you didn't have this recorder on, you could still see your audio going because you can even see if you pause it, it's still going in here. It's just not recording anymore. At the moment, I'm still only using the audio synced with OBS. I'm not actually using Audio Hijack's audio 
yet because we haven't done anything to warrant that. Now for the sake, my own sake, I'm gonna do a clap sync. That way I will be able to sync uh, the audio from Audio Hijack that we're going to start um, manipulating now with my OBS audio that I've been using so far. Always do a clap sync. I've got a tutorial somewhere, somewhere up there on top of the screen showing you how to do a sync. Now we've got audio coming in from my mic through the audio box. We've got the audio box running into a level meter so we can tell roughly where our levels are. Remember, you always want your levels to be on average between negative nine and negative 12 dB. And then I'm running into a recorder. Now let's say that you wanted to process your audio on the way in. You wanted some effects. So we come over here to built-in effects. And let's say we're only going to use the built-in ones, right? We're not gonna use anything extra. So here's what's in Audio Hijack. We've got a 10 band EQ, we've got balance, we've got bass and treble, we've got channels, low pass, filter, which removes high frequency noise, mono enhancer, all these different things, right? Volume. So these are all really useful for folks who don't know that much about audio and they all come built in. We'll take our 10 band EQ and put it right here. And now we've got a nice simple EQ that we can use. For a voice, we definitely want everything below um, below about 80 hertz to be taken care of. If I turn off this 10 band EQ, right now you should hear that there's a little bit more bass coming into it versus the way that we now have the EQ set. And I'll make it even more aggressive just so you can hear how big a difference it makes when you're using an EQ that is killing all of the low end versus turning it off and now we have all of the audio that's being recorded naturally. So you probably want to set something like this to roll off a lot of the low end and then I would usually duck out a little bit around 500 just because most voices tend to be have a little bit of extra nasaliness. Nasaliness would happen here for me that's where I want to duck out. If you have some boxiness in your recording if it sounds like it was recorded in a box that might be around 250. If you need to bring some clarity out, get a little bit more of the punch of the, uh, the, the higher frequencies, you can boost up around eight or even four, but I would try eight. You can really manipulate, and you need to do this for your voice because my voice has a very different tone than your voice, so you need to play with this. But the point is you can use your 10 band EQ and completely change your audio processing on the way in and completely change your audio processing on the way in and completely change your audio processing on the way in. Now that's fantastic. If you needed to, let's say, um, oh, I don't know, volume. Now what we could do is take a look at our level here and let's say that you needed to get extra volume. This two times overdrive is a way to increase your volume by dragging up the meter, right? So you can go up to twice as loud as you are actually recording. So now you're hearing it with it way cranked up up here, which is getting pretty close to peaking. And I want to be very careful about that versus if I bring this back to 100. Now you're hearing that this is the way I'm actually recording on the way in 100 is not it's basically normal. It's what I'm already recording it as. And if you need to really crank, you can go to three times or four times. I wouldn't recommend that you're probably going to overdrive your whole system. Let's say that you were pe you were clipping basically, or you were peaking, or you were coming in really, really hot. Well, then you could of course back off the volume, uh, and and as I'm backing off this volume, of course you can see what it's doing here. We're way down here now, around minus 18. But let's say you were live streaming, and you don't want to be around negative nine and negative 12. You want to be closer to you know minus three or minus two. You could really come all the way up here to like. 170 and now you're going to be getting a pretty solid output for any of your live streaming purposes now you notice what just happened as i said something a little bit too loud i clipped there and that is of course because i have my volume way too high so i would probably want to back that off a little bit just to avoid clipping now, Audio Hijack does not come with a built-in compressor or limiter, which is really kind of a bummer and quite an oversight for a program like this. Uh, there really ought to be, at the very least, a compressor slash limiter that has some mild functionality, even if it's mostly auto modes, so that you can just keep your voice in check and also uh, choose your maximum output uh, with a limiter so that you can't accidentally clip or overdrive 
during your live stream. Um, but let's say that you own or have downloaded a free compressor or limiter. In that case, you'll find it way down here under audio unit effects. Now you'll notice because I'm an audio engineer as a passion, I own a million effects. Let me just show you a limiter. Forget a compressor for right now. Let's just go grab a limiter and I'll put that here. So I've turned off the volume and again you notice that it's showing me that this that I'm recording all the way through if something was wrong you would see it that the audio was not making it to the next stage visually with these different highlighted areas. So let's pull up this limiter. This is the Waves L1 limiter, a very standard kind of industry standard limiter. And maybe I've got this live stream limiter uh, preset that I've already got going here. So maybe this is what I want for my uh, my live stream limiter at a minus three threshold with a minus 1.5 output ceiling. So this is going to make sure that I never clip. So if I really got way too loud right now, I would never get louder than minus 1.5. Watch right here. If I started screaming, it would never get louder than 1.5 minus 1.5 which means if you are doing a live stream and you laugh really loud out of nowhere or you start screaming because you're excited that you are actually not going to clip or overdrive or blow out anybody's ears, which is really, really useful. Now, you can obviously go download free limiters. I don't have any in particular that I recommend, but I'll look up a few and leave them in the description. There are always free plugins that you can get and you should be able to use them with Audio Hijack, no problem. Lastly, let's consider how you would actually use this for live streaming itself. Right here, I'm going to choose output device. You can choose a different output. And what you're going to want is a virtual microphone, essentially, that you can tell your streaming software is your mic. Now, loopback is the um, the Amoeba software that I mentioned earlier, uh, which I'll show you in a second. But you could use Soundflower. Soundflower is actually the uh, free the freeware for Mac that allows you to have a virtual um, a virtual microphone. So if you download Soundflower, you set it up, you have to go through those instructions again. I'll leave I'll leave those those links in the description. Again, no affiliation with Soundflower. Then your audio will be getting processed and hitting Soundflower. So then all you'd have to do is bring up your streaming software. Okay, so let's say I was streaming and I can't show the uh, cam right now because OBS is using it obviously. But if I go into audio and I choose disable audio processing because I don't want StreamYard doing its own audio processing and then I choose Soundflower now soundflower is actually the microphone it's the it's the microphone that's being used for my audio capture it's a pretty low signal right here so i could really i could crank that up obviously i could turn this back on and really crank this up and now that this is super cranked up you'll see that i'm smashing into the limiter quite a bit here but if i go in here you'll see that my volume overall just got a little bit hotter okay now we are back on normal. Uh, so anyway, the point is that that is how you would use Audio Hijack with the free software Soundflower uh, to do live streaming and process your audio in real time to level yourself to balance your EQ and all of those different things, which is really, really very cool. I think that's enough for one video. Let me know in the comments if you also want me to do a tutorial on how to use loopback, which is the internal audio routing software also from Amoeba, Amoeba and Audio Hijack is meant to work with loopback in tandem. For example, if I change the output device to loopback and we go look in loopback, you'll see that loopback is now getting the audio from Audio Hijack and I can play around with routing this audio to anywhere I want and combining it with lots and lots of different things, route them however I need to, send it to monitors, lots of cool stuff here, but I think that's too much for the rest of this video, so thanks so much for sticking with me. My name is Brian Miller. Always come back to this channel to sound better and level up. Subscribe, hit the like button if you found this useful. Hit me up in the comments for questions or ideas for future videos. You can always go to audio101.info to check out my online course, my comprehensive course in beginner audio for content creators, and the brand new quick accelerator course on podcasting I just launched, which is called Launch Your Podcast in Seven Days. That's a cheap one. It's designed to just get you off the ground and publishing your podcast 
in exactly a week from the moment that you purchase the course. You can check those out. Anyway, again, Brian Miller, thanks so much for sticking with me. And always remember, our world is a shared experience. Every interaction is meaningful, and every person you meet, even virtually, is important. We'll see you soon. What in the world was that? (laughs) 